love driving above all else? Then join us for a high-octane adventure along our most iconic roads. Drive TV puts Australia's top automotive journalists behind the wheel of the world's most interesting cars and sends them on the scenic route to destinations unknown. From smooth stretches of blacktop in a stylish sedan, snaking dirt tracks in a sports ute or star-studded SUV adventures, we're on a mission to find you the perfect car for the perfect road trip. And with the way we move changing by the minute, we'll make sure you're plugged in to the new world of electric and hybrid vehicles. It promises to be an awe-inspiring journey, with plenty of fun to be had along the way. Take the road less travelled, meet charming characters, and discover breathtaking locations, and let us introduce you to the cars, all while celebrating what's so special about the great Australian road trip. So, jump in and buckle up. It's time for a drive. this road for about 30 minutes now. Golly gee, everybody, look at that. This week, I'm taking the brand new Kia Sportage on quite the journey. We're off to the snowy mountains in New South Wales, past some of the snowfields you may have seen before. But the difference for us is that instead of a blanket of snow, we're going to be visiting in summer. We start our trip in Canberra and head for Australia's highest paved road, which sits over 1,800 metres above sea level. Why head to a high vantage point when you can go to the highest? Given the time of year, the highest paved road in Australia is currently accessible by car, and it's only a few hours away from where we are now in Canberra. My companion for this trip, the brand new 2022 Kia Sportage, a mid-sized SUV that's jam-packed with technology, plenty of luxury and just the right amount of sportiness. Fair to say, I'm in the right hands. The Kia Sportage that we've got for our trip is the range-topping GT line. It packs a two-litre, four-cylinder diesel engine, mated to an eight-speed sports automatic transmission and is all-wheel drive. The Kia Sportage battles in a very saturated medium SUV segment, but it's brought all the attributes needed to stand tall in this competitive class. The fifth generation model is a modern, stylish and more spacious offering. This Sportage has been stretched by 175 millimetres compared to that of its predecessor. It's also got a larger wheelbase, providing plenty more space, which you can really recognise once you check out its rear seat room. There's a lot of ground to cover, and while it might be nice here, the weather in the high country could be anything, and that's why I've planned for any kind of scenario. Our tip for a road trip is to stock up on supplies, as like us, you'll probably need caffeine and lollies. Oh, and a companion is always nice too. I've got my trusty film crew. After the break, we see what the Kia Sportage has in store for us on the open road. All right, well, I still can't see much. There are a lot of trees around and we are certainly in the country, but I can see those mountains peeking through the hills, which can only mean one thing. We're not too far away from the good stuff. We're off to the snowy mountains in New South Wales, which is not only home to the highest paved road on the continent, but also to one of Australia's oldest ski resorts and the gateway to Australia's highest peak, Mount Kosciuszko. It's fair to say that the Burbs is where the Kia Sportage will spend most of its time. Now, don't get me wrong, it's nice in here. It has plenty of room, a really big boot, 
but sometimes what you really need is a long drive to get to know your car. Sportage has a bunch of features that will no doubt make this journey more comfortable and enjoyable. Our car scores heated and ventilated seats, great for all weather conditions, an eight-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, plenty of storage cubbies to keep our snacks, plus a host of driver assistance goodies to help on the drive. The Sportage features adaptive cruise control which automatically maintains a safe distance between us and the car in front. It also has steering assistance and lane departure warning which helps keep you in the centre of your lane. Now these functions don't replace you as a driver but they do add just a layer of support which is particularly handy on longer road trips. And a fun fact for numbers fans, I'm cruising along at 5.4 litres per 100 kilometres, which is just under 1,000 kilometres of range on a single tank. Not bad. If you're often setting out on adventures, then be sure to plan ahead for longer road trips with the right tyres. Having the right tyre fitted to your vehicle is important for performance, but also for the safety of your family. To find out more, make sure you speak to the experts at Bob Jane T-Marts. I jumped behind the wheel of the Sportage, I knew I was in for something special. It's refined, comfortable, with the perfect driving position and exceptional all-round visibility. In fact, one of the first things that will no doubt catch your eye is this very funky curved digital display that combines two 12.3-inch screens, one for multimedia and the other for instruments. And it's easy to use on the move. Now that was a pretty big stretch of highway, but we are just about to reach Kuma. I can see that my last break was just over two hours ago, and my Kia tells me that my attention level is high. Must have been from all those coffees, but I am looking forward to getting onto some windier roads. We're passing through some beautiful towns along the way, like this one. Kuma is the gateway to the snowy mountains. Some trivia, the name is derived from the traditional location, Kumba, which means big swamp. I think that's a little unfair as it's really quite nice. So we are just getting into Jindambai now and I can see the famous lake right ahead of us. Certainly a bit of a landscape change to the past couple of hours, but it does look like it is just starting to rain. The big landmark in the town of Jindabyne, aside from the mountains, is the lake of the same name. This was formed by the development of the Snowy Hydro Scheme and the original site of the Jindabyne Township now lies underwater. The whole town as it was, was moved in the 1960s as part of the construction project. You can even see parts of the old town when the water levels of the lake are low. And because of some of the recent snow and water level, at the moment, it's almost overflowing. The region is home to some of the nation's favourite ski resorts as well as the most complex engineering project ever undertaken in Australia, the Snowy Mountains Hydroelectric Scheme. Not only does this provide power to thousands of Australian homes, it created some of the landmarks we'll pass on our drive. Well, luckily I don't pack light and I've come prepared. We've arrived in Jindabyne and not only is it freezing cold, but it's pouring rain. Seems like the perfect time to park her up and call it quits for the day. But tomorrow, I'll arrive at that final destination. After the break, I'm on cloud nine, literally. Stay tuned as we make it to the top and get the moody best of the snowy mountains. Welcome back. It's plain sailing now on my trip with the Kia Sportage, but the real peaks of the snowy mountains await. The storm clouds are rolling in. How can the Sportage climb? And can we make it to the highest road or will the weather get in the way?
Well, it's the second day of our journey and really not much has changed since we arrived here last night. It is freezing cold, the weather is sketchy. Where we're headed is over one kilometre straight up and we really don't know what lies ahead. As you can see right now, the mountains are mainly covered in thick fog. And yes, there is even snow forecast, even though I thought it was summertime. But thankfully, the Kia is all wheel drive. Even though this is a high riding SUV with the family in mind, if you want to get a kick out of driving by ticking the family box, then this ride is firmer than some of its competitors, but it helps give it that sportier edge. Kia used local engineers to tune the suspension and handling for Australian conditions. And I have to say, the sport in Sportage is really quite warranted. Driving along Kosciuszko Road, just crossed over the Threadbow River, and the first thing I notice is the yellow lines, which could only mean one thing, and that is that there are some pretty cool driving roads ahead. Kosciuszko Road is a 40 kilometre climb to the summit. The aggressive handling and high level of cabin comfort made the ride enjoyable in these tricky conditions. Dindabyne Surge Tank is the perfect pit stop to take in Lake Dindabyne and the village as a whole. Now Lake Dindabyne itself is just one water storage lake here. There are 16 major dams that hold 7,000 gigalitres of water. That's Sydney Harbour 12 times over. OK, I think that's enough pit stops for one trip. Buckle up because the weather is closing in and there's still a long way to go. This is where the climb really begins. We're at 1,032 metres above sea level, but there is still plenty of road to go. You can put the Kia in a sportier driving mode for a more direct feel at the steering wheel, longer gaps between your gear changes, and also an edgier look on the digital instrument cluster. And while we have left the suburbs behind and below, I have to say that the Kia feels more at home here than it did in the burbs. Oh, and what's that? Paddle shifters. Let's get it. Taking a drive to somewhere with a high vantage point should never be underestimated. Not only are the views great, but the journey itself can be a pretty fun one. So it is freezing cold. I've got my seat heater pumping. And we did just bump into some locals who've already been all the way up the mountain. And unfortunately, all they saw was a cloud. Let's hope that it gets better. While I don't visit the snow often, not that I was planning for snow, but one good thing is that I have the roads pretty much all to myself. These roads offer up a bit of everything. Soft and harder surfaces, winding twists and turns, featuring plenty of hairpins and of course, beautiful sights to see on either side. I can't say that I am a snow bunny and I haven't really come to the snow a lot so I haven't driven these roads often and I'm not really used to driving in these conditions. I want to tell you it's fun. It's not fun yet but there is some fun to come I promise you. Oh that old chalet looks haunted. This is a little bit scary I'm not gonna lie. Now that I'm close to my final destination, or so I think I am, can't really see what's ahead of me, but the signs tell me that we're not too far away. So let me tell you the history of this highest paved road. It's called Charlotte Pass. 
The story goes that Charlotte Pass itself is named after Charlotte Adams, who in 1881 became the first European woman to climb Mount Kosciuszko, Australia's highest peak. The development of the Snowy Mountains meant that the area, which had been known for skiing since the 1850s when gold was found at Kianda, became an important winter playground. In winter, this is jam-packed with ski-goers and only accessible by travelling in over-snow transport. But in summer, Charlotte Pass is the starting point for the Mount Kosciuszko Summit Walk and Main Range Walk to Australia's highest mountain. OK, so we've finally got a little bit of a break in the clouds. I mean, I can see more coming at us, but wow, this looks pretty stunning. And it's all opened up to just beautiful hills on either side. These roads are unbelievable. And now I'm looking out to some pretty breathtaking views. It's a beautiful sight to see and it's quiet. As quickly as the weather opened up to reveal the picturesque mountains, it didn't take long before it was engulfed in fog yet again. And of course, just as we were so close to reaching the top. We're here. Okay, this is it. We've reached the top of the highest paved road in Australia, a road literally on top of the clouds. And seeing it in person, it really is beautiful. But how's the timing? Just as we're making our stop, we're greeted by mountain weather. Once on top, our altimeter says we're now about 1,847 metres above sea level. That's just over 6,000 feet. To put this into perspective, that's higher than the Burj Khalifa Tower, the Empire State Building, the Eiffel Tower and Canberra's Black Mountain Tower, all stacked up on top of each other. Now, everyone went on and on about these walking trails. It's only 18 kilometres. Hmm, on second thought, I can't feel my hands. I think we're done here. Taking on these challenging roads, the Sportage more than excelled. Its handling is effortless. I felt more than confident behind the wheel. Coming up, want to drive along the highest paved road? We'll direct you on your drive to the Snowy Mountains. Well, it's not really the view that we'd expected, but we did it. We made it to the top of Australia's highest paved road, which is quite literally a road above the clouds, or today, in them. Now, this is a great two-day trip for anyone. The roads to get here are actually spectacular. And the Kia Sportage, well, it proved that it can handle a long tour, has plenty of comfort and a fair amount of fun too. I'm looking forward to the drive home though, as it is quite literally all downhill from here. Our trip started from Canberra, as we headed south along the well-travelled Monero Highway to Cooma. We then took a right, stopped in Jindabyne, before trekking due west along Kosciuszko Road to the final destination. Charlotte Pass. There are 11 variants in total across four trim levels. The range kicks off with the Sportage S in manual with a petrol engine. The model that we chose for our trip is the top spec GT line, which is jam packed with standard features. While driving the GT line, it's getting close to European luxury feel top of the mountain, if you will, Kia's come such a long way from a budget-focused brand to a stylish mainstay, and this car is the perfect example. For more information and pricing and specifications, head to drive.com.au. Plus, get all the details for this drive by scanning the QR code on your screen or visiting us online. You know, it was actually our very own James Wardy Ward that booked me in on this trip at this time of the year. So I think payback's coming your way, Wardy. Stay tuned. Got 
turn your ideas on a great drive or special road that needs to be discovered, let us know. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube to stay up to date and get some exclusive behind the scenes details and extras. And we'll see you next time for a drive. Next week on the show, Sam goes rogue in the Ford Ranger Raptor, gets airborne and heads off the beaten track. That's next week on Drive.